Hi everyone and welcome to the Dodo Bird Nerd. It's me, the Dodo Bird Nerd, and in today's video I'm going to be doing the second part of the Taxonomy of Magic the Gathering series, going over phylums, all but two of them specifically. So, without any further ado, let's roll the intro and let's get started. So what are phylums? Well, phylums are the next most specific categorization in taxonomy. And in Kingdom Animalia, there are a total of 34 of them. We'll be going over 32 of them, somewhat, in this video, leaving two for future videos, those being Arthropoda and Chordata. Now, as in previous videos, all works that I've used, either from further knowledge or reading up to just write correct information, are in the description below if you want further reading or whatever or just to check my sources and you know all that rot so which phylums can I not cover due to the simple fact of them not being in Magic the Gathering like they have no cards representing them I believe now while I'm on the screen I have listed their common name I'm just gonna list their specific phylum name just to keep this section more brief those being Brachiopoda, Bryozoa, Setanophora, Cycliophora, Inorcani or Hincha, Lorisifera, Micrognathozoa, Orthonetida, Placozoa, Rhombozoa, Rotifera, Tardigrada, and Xenacuelomorpha. I apologize if I butchered any of those, because I probably did. But those are the phylums which have nothing in Magic the Gathering. So, in the context of this series, I can't really cover them, as I'd have nothing really to say. So, moving on to the first thing that we are going to be covering, the first phylum, Nadaria. Now, Nadaria, their main thing is they have things called nidocytes, I believe that's what that's pronounced. And these are used for obtaining food. An example will be jellyfish, which we'll get to in a second. Now, these are mainly aquatic dwelling. And while coral are a member of them, the only coral card we've seen has had the wall type because it was a coral barrier. And so I don't really feel like covering them. However, one Nadarian we can cover are jellyfish. Now jellyfish have stingers which they can use to either protect themselves or to help them get prey. Now some examples of jellyfish include the Mana War which is the magic card I'm showing here and the box jellyfish which I believe is one of the most poisonous species of jellyfish on the planet. Now one unique thing in the jellyfish type, at least in Magic, which I forgot to put down, was that the single anemone card, I believe, that they printed has the jellyfish type. Now, likely this was because they're in the same um, phylum, Nadaria. However, I mean, then I'm in that case, I might change it to Nadaria or just give it an enemy. Because, I mean, there's no cards that care about jellyfish, so you're not going to be losing anything. But I would either change it to Nadaria or maybe give it its own type, but I understand why they just gave it jellyfish. Giving animals a theme, a name, a type, that is in the same group of categorization as they are, but not exactly, is going to be a running theme as we will see throughout the series. Now, the next phylum is Echinodermata, which is the echinoderms. Now, again, these are aquatic dwelling species, and the these tend to have radial symmetry, radially symmetrical, basically meaning they are the similar. The example would be sea stars, like they're similar all the way around. Now, in Magic, we're actually missing some members of Echinodermata, mainly sea urchins, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, and sea lilies. However, the main thing in Echinodermata that we do have are starfish. Now, starfish typically will have five arms, though there are examples of them having many more. 
Some of them eat coral, specifically, this is going to be a reference to another part of my channel, the one Marini is based off of. And these can regenerate their limbs once they've lost them, and there are even some types that a new body can be grown off of a severed limb, which is interesting to say the least. Moving on to the largest section in terms of number of creature types in this video, we have the phylum Mollusca. Now, these have very few common traits that unite the phylum. However, they tend to have two body parts called mantles and radulas, though there are a few that don't have them. And they all have generally similar nervous system structures, but that is the main thing that unites the phylum. And stuff that is missing in magic includes stuff like bivalves, chitons, cuttlefish, tusk shells, aplacophoras, monoplacophora, and resiconge? Uh, my notes kind of mess up at that point, but it's on the screen if you want the correct spelling and all that. And as well as snails, though slugs are in magic and I do kind of reference snails in their section. So the first uh, mollusk we're going to be covering is the nautilus. Now these typically will have a shell around them. I guess you could kind of say they're similar in appearance to stuff like ammonites, though there are some differences. And these have been around for around the same time, I believe. They're definitely very old, as we'll get into in a second. There are only currently six of these things that are currently still alive, though. Six different species of nautilus. And they are called living fossils due to the fact that they've been on Earth for such a long time without changing drastically. Another example would be something like the coelacanth, which is what um, relicanth is based off of. The next mollusk that I'm going to be covering is the octopus. Now, these are very smart mollusks. They have eight arms, eight tentacles, I guess you could say. They have a beak, and they can change color and shoot ink. And they are venomous, though only one species is actually venomous to humans specifically. Now these are the most common mollusk to show up in Magic the Gathering. The previously mentioned Nautilus only has two cards to its name, and we go down from there for a few of these. The next one is going to be oysters. Remember how I mentioned that I said we were going down for a bit? Yeah, that's one of them. There's only one oyster in the entirety of Magic the Gathering, and I believe it's from Homelands. Or some other really old set. Now, oysters tend to have harder outer bodies. I don't know if they're specifically a shell, um, but they have ha harder outer section. Um, however, and most people associate them with having pearls. And while all oyster species do have pearls, the ones we know of that produce pearls aren't actual oysters. They're in a separate group to oysters. Uh, separate, I believe, either family or class. It's on the screen. But they're different. They're in mollusca, but they're not the same. So that that's interesting. Um, and then the, last, the next one we have are squids. Now, squids are kind of similar to octopus. They're both they're all, both cephal cephalopods, along with nautilus. Uh, they can change color, they have ink, and there's this really big one, the giant squid, that gets, you know, well, big. Um, but they also have some other things. They tend to have two arms with eight tentacles, so a bit different than the octopus just having eight tentacles. And that is just one difference. They are slightly different structures in terms of how they're organized like anat anatomically, but yeah, they're both cephalopods, so they're going to have some similarity. And the last mollusk is slug. Now a slug is a gastropod that lives on land and doesn't have a shell. Basically, the only difference between that and a snail is, I believe some snails can live in the ocean, or in water in general, and those do have shells. But other than that, I mean, they're both gastropods, which is basically why I didn't put snail, even though I probably should have. They're similar enough. And that is going to conclude mollusks. The next thing we have is periphera. Now, 
This literally just means poured. It, it, basically, that's why it's called periphera. There is something added on to like what periphera means, but generally, they're poured. Which is why the only thing in periphera are sponges. Because that that's just it. The, the reason it's called that is because they are they have pores, which they use to get food by filtering through water. And there's only two sponges in the entirety of Magic the Gathering. It used to just be one for an incredibly long time. And then I think they printed one in Commander 2019, which I think might be close to a real sponge, but it doesn't like stick in one place like a lot of sponges do. So I'd have to do further research on that one specifically, but I mean, it's probably just given a sponge because it kind of looks like body-wise like a sponge. It's just, it, and it's called a sponge, but it's swimming around, so I, I don't know. But yeah, sponges, they're a thing. Then we get to the most complicated, not the longest part of the video, but the most complicated, which are worms. Now... Worms can be both vertebrates and invertebrates, which is something, because worm is generally a catch-all term for animals with long bodies that are rounded, they don't have limbs, or they don't have eyes. However, there are always exceptions to this rule. And so I'm just going to say worms, and then list the phylums, because... They're just, they're all very similar. There is one specific type of worm I'm going to go a bit more specifically on, but the main ones that we care about, the list of phylums in general that care about worms are Achenthocephala, Analita, Chetognatha, Entoprocta, Gastrotrica, Ganath, Ostomolita, Hemichordata, Nematoda, Nematomorpha, Nemes Ertica, sorry about that one. Onichophora, Pronoida, Platyhemolysis, Pirapaludia, and Sipuncula. Those are all the various types of worms. Those are all those phylums. They did used to be all in one phylum. But then, you know, they decided to be scientifically accurate and all, and split them up into a bunch of phylums. So, those are worms. However, there is a worm that isn't a worm magic. Those being leeches. Now, leeches, I believe, are specifically nematoids. Um, I, yeah, I believe they are nematoids. If they're not, I'll leave something on the bottom screen. But leeches are blood-sucking parasites, typically, and they've been used in medical procedures. They used them a lot in the past, and I believe they do still use them sometimes occasionally now. So, that, that is basically a leech. They're just the blood-sucking worm. I think some can suck things other than blood, like other body stuff. Like, they're a parasite. I mean, I believe they're most commonly associated with blood just because of their medical use in bloodletting. But those are all but two phylums in Animalia. Whether I went far, far into it or not, you generally have the list of all but two of them, the remaining two being Arthropoda and Chordata, which will be gone into later on in the series. Arthropoda, specifically, will be on Halloween. I didn't plan that. That's just how it came out. So, you know... Yay! I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, spiders, scorpions, and all that raw on Halloween. It makes sense to do it then. It just kind of worked out like that. So, I will see you in terms of continuing this series on Halloween. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye!